Hi, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to try to fix up this job lot of sat navs here. This came from a much bigger box full of sat navs. What I did is I just pulled out all the same make, the Garmin Nuvies, that's what I'm going to pronounce it, it could be wrong. And I thought I'd do them in a little job lot together. Now, although they're all the same make, they're all Garmin Nuvies, they are different sizes and also some of them look completely different. Not only is that a different colour, but it looks like a different, uh, it's like a different model completely, but it's still called a Garmin Nuvie. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we can get some of them working by the end of it. Obviously, it's technology now which is dated because a lot of cars now have the sat navs built in. And if your car hasn't got the sat nav in or even even if your car has got a sat nav in, a lot of people use Google Maps because it gives you live traffic. So the whole box was sent over by Mike from kitdigital.com. You've probably heard of that name before because he is the longest standing member in the My Mate Vince Massive, which is quite an achievement. So uh, big thank you, Mike. Now, kitdigital.com has a repair shop here in the UK, fixes things like laptops, and PCs and also games consoles as well. So I had a look at his website earlier. You can even buy little parts, like if you wanna buy a PlayStation 5 HDMI port or the video chip from the Nintendo Switch, he sells little parts like that. And obviously if you want the PlayStation 5 fixing or your Nintendo Switch and stuff like that, he does fix them there. So maybe if you're in the UK and you have a damaged item and you're a bit nervous about doing it yourself, maybe you can have a chat with Mike, kitdigital.com, and uh, he might be able to help you out. So now let's get these out. Earlier on when I looked at these, I've had these for months and months now. Earlier on when I looked at them, when I say earlier on, I mean like months ago, I seem to remember that some of the ports felt loose. Oh, there we go, that, that port there, that port is definitely broken. Whether I'll be able to reuse the port or not, I don't know. Maybe I can swap parts around and get some working out of the nine of them. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's take them apart and see what's going on with them. But they're all uh, they're all faulty. I checked them months ago. None of them do work. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get started. Just give me a little clean. Trying to get as much static into it as possible because I'm not wearing an ESD strap. Never know, a bit of static shock might actually fix them. It's got a nice bit of grime on that one. And that one as well. I think somebody's been eating sausage sandwiches or something. Okay, these ones here all have broken ports, so I think I'm gonna look at them to begin with. This one's doing some weird boot loop thing where it keeps just cutting out, there you go, gone again. Uh, and a lot of the others need a pin. So, I'm not sure whether they're gonna be in a way bricked because I'm not going to know the pin number. One also asked me to go to a secure location. But uh, let me just fast forward through this while this one's loading up. There you go. Enter in pin. Also, because technology has moved on, it feels kind of so weird using the touch screens here. Invalid pin. Move into your security location will automatically unlock the device. So uh, I'm not gonna know where that is. So all of these here have some kind of pin issue or it's got a picture of a computer with a cable coming out of it. So I don't actually know whether they're gonna be fixable or not, but maybe I might be able to kind of take the ports out of here and put them into here. Now just to show you these, you can see that none of them are drawing anything. And also look, I mean, that's definitely faulty. Wiggly, properly wiggly. Properly wiggly. And, yeah, very wiggly again. So let's see if we can get into these. These three look to be the same, and this just seems to be wider. Is there any screws on here? It looks like the back's been peeled off. I wonder if there hidden screws in there? Yes, there is, yeah, little screws here. Okay, that's not so bad, actually. I thought I'd have to pry them open. Now, what are they? Right, I think they're a Torx bit, a Torx, Five, a T5. And while we're breaking into this, let's give a nice big festive Christmas shout out to the My Mate Vince Massive. And this month, they consist of kitdigital.com. He's the one that's sent in the sat navs. Next up, we have Kip Hakes, then Max Rokotansky. Having fun repairs, Edinsburg Amplifier Repair and Service. Will Michaelis, Chris Seal, Felipe at mrkeebs.com. King Curd from Low Book Auto Sales. DJVG. Tobias Henneg, Robert from Timsey's Auto Air, Albert at www.faroutsounds.co.uk, and Jaden Ho. Massive thanks to all 
the members of the MMV Massive this month. Thank you so much. Once I've taken apart one, the others will be easier because then I'll hopefully know roughly the layout of the inside. Yeah, okay, here we go. Here we go. Now, what do I do here? Okay, here's the ribbon cable here. There we go. We are free. So, hopefully we won't have to worry with this side of it here. We can just worry about this side here. There's the battery, 3.7 volts, so it's a lithium battery. Now let's undo these screws here. They're just normal crosshead screws. Here we go. All right, well, we've got speaker and the battery connection. What is that there? Ooh. What is? Is that some sort of massive heat sink? I bet that's a heat sink, you know. It kind of feels like ceramic. That part there reminds me of uh, a piezo buzzer. But obviously, this is the speaker down here. Let's unplug that. Yeah, it must be a heat sink, is it? Right, okay, port here. What's going on? The port's broken there. But are the pins broken at the bottom? Don't look it. The port's broken there, but it's that side broken. Yes it is, yeah. Can you see all those pins lifted here? Annoyingly, this shield is in the way. How easy is that shield going to be to remove? Well, even if I remove that, it's the SD card that's in the way. What an annoying place to put that. Here's my solder iron that's off at the moment. Is it even going to reach in here? Oh, it's going to be tight. Well, I'll get some flux and I'll try it. Yeah, they're all they're all broken. I'll be able to get to these ones, no problem. They're just the, the ground pads, the anchor points. Right, while I'm waiting for the soldering iron to heat up, I'm just getting my isopropyl alcohol ready to clean it all up at the end. Right, this should be fun. See, if those pins were the other way around, I would be very confident about doing this, but just because the soldering iron is going to be hard to get in there, I think I'm just going to have to try to reflow what's already there rather than add new solder to it. But anyway, I'm at 480 degrees Celsius. The tip is a kind of medium sized tip. Let's just see whether or not I can get any of this melted. Now, you think this would be quite easy, but it was a right little pain because the tip on my soldering iron isn't really quite big enough to melt the solder properly because the board's draining away the heat. But yet, if I use a bigger tip, there's just so little, there's just lack of space there. So uh, yeah, it really was very, very tricky. And this bit here probably took me about 10 minutes, maybe not 10 minutes, a good five minutes. I'm just fast forwarding through this because we have quite a lot of sat navs to get through, but yeah, very, very difficult. Now, what I'm doing is, changing the tip of my soldering iron but because of my solder station is just one of the cheap Chinese ones I have to turn it off let it cool down completely and then put a new tip in to try to get more thermal mass into the board on these anchor points to try to get it in and then I'll just show you the pins although they do look a complete and utter mess they are actually testing okay now look if I go to continuity you can see that this last one's a ground and now look Ground is not shorting anywhere else. Yeah, that's just it when I hit this here. And they're not shorting onto each other. So ground isn't on that one next to it, there. That one is okay to there. That one is okay to there. And that one is okay to there. And they're all stuck. So I do actually think, although it looks horrible, I do think that they are soldered. Now, let's see if we can get anything going on on here. See, the bigger tip is going to transfer much more heat into the board. There you go, that went fully liquid there. 
Should have enough on here from last time. Oh, that's much better now. Look at that. Yeah, do you see that? Much nicer. Uh, am I going to be able to squeeze this in here? No, I'm not. Uh, let's try to poke it down here. No, I can't get in there. I'm going to have to... What am I going to do here? Let's see if I can do it just there. There you go. That's flooded around there. Now, Vince from the future here while editing. I did something with that big iron that I didn't spot at the time when I was trying to solder up the anchor points on that port. So I've just got this little bit in slow motion just to give you a chance to see if you can spot it. All will be revealed a little bit later in the video, but can you see what I've done wrong now? Extra bonus points if you can. See, something like this is going to have to work for data as well as charging, isn't it? Because, you know, when it comes to the updates and stuff. Thing is, are these things actually being updated anymore? Right, let's see now. I won't clip it into place. Let's just see if it's going to charge now. Whoa. IPA nearly went again. Yes, it's climbing. Remember, the battery will be completely flat. Yeah, I'm not too happy with that. I wonder whether we've got any voltage going into the battery. Uh, can I measure it? No, I have to take the board out, don't I? Well, I presume it's uh, black, red, and the green one's going to be like the one that monitors monitors it. Yeah, I don't think we've got any voltage in that battery at all. No, there's nothing in that battery. Right, I'm going to leave that one apart for the moment because maybe that battery's failed. Because uh, the other ones are charged. I mean, maybe if we left it on for long enough, we would get charge into it. It's just that, again, it's lithium. It's 3.7 volts. At this moment, it's measuring nothing. So the uh, it might well now be unsafe to, to charge up. So let's leave this one on charge, just in case the battery kicks back into life if I leave it in for a good hour or so. And let's move on to the second one with the 40 port and let's see if this is any easier. Right, let's just do this one here. So on this one here is just another broken port. So as I take it apart on this one, it's not just that the port is loose, it's completely disconnected. It's been ripped away from the board completely. Amazingly, the pads are intact. The port itself doesn't look very nice. I need to bend it back into place with tweezers and pliers to make it fit again. But when I use a bit of solder wick on the actual board, the uh, pads clean up lovely. Annoyingly, the shielding on this one covers like three sides of the port so I have to peel back the shield and just kind of bend it back in order to get access to solder it on again. In real time this took me about half an hour maybe a bit longer I really struggled on it just like I struggled on the first one. It's uh, I think it's because of the lack of access to get to the pins and also I have to use a small soldering iron because there's other components nearby otherwise I'm going to knock them off the board. So yeah I struggled a lot more on these than I thought I would especially that they're mini USB they're not even micro USB uh, but yet the, the, the pins are still it was still hard work so uh, yeah that's uh, that one done I'll show you the results of that in a minute and then I've got another two to do again I'm not going to show you them in real time because it's just changing over the ports realistically you'd be watching two hours of me struggling changing the ports over so through the beauty of editing it might make it slightly more watchable
check for continuity between the pins. So we should have, this is the grounds we have. Grounds not coming up anywhere else. So now between that one and here. No, that's fine. That one and here. That's fine. Brilliant. And this one and here. No, perfect. Right, okay, I think that is gonna be okay. When I screw that down, that will pull that into there. I think there's still enough shield there to do what it needs to do. Right, let's pop it roughly back together, plug the charger in, see if it does anything. Don't think this is gonna fit all the way in there. Oh, yes it is, look, 41. There we go. Ah, so that one's working, so the battery on that one is okay. We fixed one! Yippee! Let's see if this is locked. 0.41 amps, 410 milliamps it should do. Right, and it's saying to plug into the computer again. Maybe it needs a card. But yeah, that's uh, it's doing something different now than it was before. And it appears to be charging, which is good. Right, okay. Now, we know that this one here... Yeah, that's broken. And also this one here also have broken charge ports. So, uh, let me do them off camera. If there's any surprises or anything, I can always start filming again. Right, okay, the next one that I did went nice and easy, just like the other one before. It was all straightforward. The, the port itself was in quite good nick, just needed bending back into place. This port, however, was awful. The legs have all snapped off it and also one of the legs of the actual pins had snapped off as well. So what I'm doing is I'm running a tiny little bit of wire from the ground pad there to there, and then I'm gonna fold this over and I'm just gonna use the hot air to melt this into place and hopefully that wire will stay intact. It's, uh, it's a bad job, it needs a new port, but I don't even know if these ports are still available or not. And also, realistically, the value of these items now it might not even be worth, I know that sounds sad, it might not even be worth getting the right port for it. So uh, I'm just bodging this one up and hopefully that will work. As long as I have a ground connection between here and that pad there onto that pin, then it will be fine. So you can see I've soldered the wire there, I'm just gonna fold it over, melt it into place, and then I can see if those two are charging or not. Right, this is the one with the dodgy port, let's see if it's gonna do anything. even going to fit in. Come on. Yes, there we go. Amazing. There we have it. Oh my god, there's a picture of a cat. <laughs> it's a picture of a cat on a windowsill. Right, excellent. Well, what I'm going to do there is, because that port's incredibly weak, because it hasn't got any anchor points, and... Uh, I've had to solder a tiny wire onto it. I think I am gonna put a load of hot glue around it, just to give it a little bit more strength. Uh, I'm gonna put this one back in, we can test that one, and then we can start looking at the other one, see what's going on with them. Right, okay, that one's all back together now. Again, it's got that symbol down there, so maybe none of these work without the SD card. Right, uh, oh, and it's holding. It held there for a couple of seconds, so obviously the battery is completely flat. Now, this is the other one. Let's see if this is gonna work. Yes, Garmin, there. So do you know what? Maybe this other one, with the complete flat battery, maybe there is a problem with that one. You know, this one over here. I think what I might do is I might put the little charger that I use for the switch, the TP, whatever it is, charger, on here because maybe it's only drawing 0.8 amps because it's still not happy with uh, the, the low battery. So maybe I might bypass it to get some charge into that battery. Right, okay, right, this is another one that says enter pin. I don't think there's going to be enough battery life to do anything on them. The battery is probably so depleted, even with this here, it might not actually, if there's anything like 
there it tried to make a sound and it cut out so maybe I need to have it on charge for a while now there you go it's going off right okay yeah they all need to be charged up for ages because the uh, batteries are going to be completely and utterly dead right okay let me just tidy up and then we need to have a look at these other ones and see if there's a way well what I need to do the other ones all have pin related problems or uh, we have that symbol with the computer so I need to work out if there's a way to bypass the pin now what am I going to do on this one Right, this is the one which is charging funny. I've put charge into this battery, it's now showing 3.6. So really at that 3.6 level, this should be taken over, but it's still going 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 0, 0, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 0, like that. Now look, I'm zoomed in, well I've looked on my uh, microscope and I can see that there's a capacitor bridged. I wonder if that's what the problem is. So look at this one here. Look at that little fella there. Can you see this one here? And if I go here, you can see it is shorted. There. So maybe, maybe that there is the problem. I mean, that would have been me when I was trying to solder this up. I reckon the solder line just hits on this bit here. Right, let's see now if that short's gone. Yes, it's gone now. Yes, yeah, so it would have been ground in that one there. Right, let's now put that back in and see if it's going to start charging properly. Right, be good to me now, work. Here goes, I've got my hopes up. Come on now, charge properly. Yes, brilliant. Oh, fantastic, and it's coming on. Brilliant, so it was a shorted capacitor, my own fault. Fantastic, right, okay. Uh, and it's come up with that symbol there again. Right, let me do some research into these things. Oh, I'm so pleased. So uh, yeah, out of those ones with all the faulty ports, we've got screen and charge going into every single one of them. The batteries might not hold a charge, but we've definitely uh, fixed them to the, the the amount we can fix them anyway without changing things like the batteries over. Oh, I'm so pleased about that one because that was confusing me, the way it was doing that. Fantastic. Let's just see, is it gonna... Yes, it's keeping its charge a bit. Excellent. Brilliant. Well, it is possible to do a factory reset on them. I've just done it on this one here. Let's see if it's going to work on this one. All you have to do is just hold down your thumb on the bottom right-hand corner. So let's see now. Is it going to do something here? There we go. Do you really want to erase all the user data? It's incredibly faint on this one here. I'm going to go to... Oh, it's gone off. No, it's not going to let me do that one because the battery is too flat. Right, let me try this one here. Yes. Here we go. Excellent. So I just need to do that on various different ones and then let's see how many I can get. What? Oh, pin number again. Ah, so it doesn't get rid of the pin. So the factory reset doesn't get rid of the pin, does it? So all you're actually doing there is erasing the user details, things like their previous journeys and stuff. Ah, so does that mean then there's no way out of this? Move into your security location will automatically unlock the device.
Right, more research is needed, but I don't think I'm going to be able to unlock these, which is a real shame. I'll get some work in though. Right, it's not good news. So, this little thing here means file transfer mode, this picture off the PC. For example, when you go to update it. Now, reading online, people was, people are saying that uh, it can depend on the cable you're using. It can depend on the charger you're using because it thinks some cables it will think that uh, it's connected to a PC. And I thought, right, well, okay, that doesn't really sound right because the, the cable should just charge it or it should do data if it needs to, you know, the one cable should be able to do both. But just to prove it, what I did is I had this broken USB, mini USB one here. So I disconnected the data cables from it and now I've just got power going into it. So it hasn't got anything to do with data and yet it's still in file transfer mode. So I think probably what's happened here is these have gone wrong when they were updating and now they're stuck in this thing here. Maybe I can try to wipe it and then uh, upload the information again, possibly. I'm not too sure. I think I've got a register with Garmin for that. I have tried resetting it here by holding this down and it does turn itself off, but when it comes on, it does the same thing here. So that's no good. Now, the other thing which is no good is all the ones with a pin number on them and there was quite a few on there they are not going to be fixable because it's obviously a security measure. So if you uh, forget your PIN number, you have to take it back to your secure location, which is what it's asking me to do. If you've forgotten your secure location and your PIN number, in other words, the same as the situation I've got here now, you have to send it back to Garmin. They're the only ones that can reset it, you know, get rid of the PIN or whatever. So, and you need proof of receipt and stuff for that. So out of all of these eight or nine, however many I've got, yet yeah, nine of them, uh, I'm only going to be able to get two working. Now, I haven't given up on this file transfer one yet. I'm going to do a bit more research, but the pin numbers are definitely a write-off. I have got one that isn't actually turned on at all, so I might have a quick look at that. But yeah, we're not, uh, we're not doing too well, which is a real shame. Right, this is on here, which isn't doing anything, so there's no life in it whatsoever. And then it will charge at this, but then it will drop down really low. There you go, drop down low again. So it's not really making any sense. So I'm gonna take it apart. I'm wondering if that's gonna be a battery issue. Look at this one here. Can you see that? This has water damage. Let's see what it looks like on the other side. Yeah, there you go, you can see the damage around here. First of all, let's see the voltage in the battery. Oh, it's got voltage in the battery. Okay, that's good. Now let's zoom in here. Can you see it all around here? And over here, there's little bits of it everywhere. Well, let's give it a little clean with IPA just in case it comes to life. Maybe the corrosion's causing a short between uh, over a capacitor or something. Yeah, it could be bridge in there. Really, I suppose we need to see what's under here as well. Now, this has been opened before because I could tell from the sticker and also the scrapes around the shell. I hope there wasn't a, a chip on that originally. I mean, it does seem to be corroded up here, doesn't it? Oh, look at that there. There we go. Oh, yeah, look at that. It's completely blown. That's a coil, isn't it? Hmm, okay. Well, it's not a coil no more, I don't think. I'll give it a quick clean, but that coil's gone and there's probably numerous other things possibly gone in it as well. All right, giving it a quick scrub and now the caps and stuff seem to be okay. They're only shortened on one side. I haven't gone across every single one. 
they're okay. Right, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's just put it back together and let's just see if we short the coil, whether or not we get any different charge out of it or any life maybe. Right, so now, plug it in again. Right, so that's the same as it was before. Let's just see if we short the coil, whether we're gonna get any, uh... there we go, Garmin. See it come up there? I don't wanna do it too much, but uh, there, there it is. Right, so it's a faulty coil. Whether there's other faults or not, I don't know. Let me see if I can do anything about that. Right, well, this one is asking for a pin. So we know that this is no good. So why don't I see if this has a coil in that I can take and put in this one. We might be lucky, this might not ask for a pin, in which case then we can get another working one. Right, this is the one with the pin and we have got a coil in the same location in that corner. Different marking on the top, but I'm sure it's gonna be okay. So let me just pop that out. Where I grab it, I'm not gonna grab it in the corners where the little wires are. And on this one, yeah, I can clearly see a wire going off in that direction and in that direction. So the other one had a broken wire on both sides. Well, I've already applied solder to the pads, so let's just pop this in with the soldering iron. Right, there we go, let's measure this and see what this is measuring. There we go, you can hear a short across it now. Right, I'm gonna put this back together and see if we can, uh, see if this is gonna be another worker. Let's see if it's going to turn on. I'll probably need to charge it. Oh, it's coming on already. And it said Garmin. I think it's after this screen that the pin number comes up. Right, we've got that weird file transfer thing going on again. Right, it has actually come up with it. It says warning, but yet my touch screen's not working. So I can't do anything with it. Yeah, look, it is working, it's not locked. There you go. Right, let me try swapping the screen out, just in case the screen got damaged. So I put the screen in from the one that I took the coil out of, and annoyingly, although it looks to be the same size, for some reason, it doesn't fit. It looks to be off-centered on the actual display. Can you see the screen doesn't fit it properly? But I want to see if the touch screen is going to work. Oh, there we go. That's why the touch screen is not working. Can you see the ribbon cable's broken here? Look at that there. The ribbon cable's broken. You can see that bit snaps. Right, okay, well that's why the touch screen is not doing what it needs to do. It's a shame that this one doesn't fit it. Yeah, this one works, but it's just too big. I wonder if there's any way we could uh, change the settings on it. Display. All oh, right, okay. Uh, now, any of the other ones are gonna fit? No, they're all, all the other ones are big, aren't they? Right, I am going to, what am I gonna do? Let me try and repair this, I suppose. That's a real shame, that. So I'm just using a blade to scrape back the ribbon cable to get to the copper in the middle of it. 
Right, I can see shiny copper on all those little bits now. So we have to then get the soldering iron and let's try to add some solder to those bits. Right, it's going to be extremely hard to see, but you can just about make out a pad here with a wire going up to a pad here. So I've done one, I just need to do the other three, and then we can see if we put it back together, see if it works or not. So it's probably going to take me about another 15 or 20 minutes, so I'm going to stop filming for a bit and just show you the finished result. Okay, so I've soldered up here, it's incredibly fragile. I've put a load of hot glue around it just to try to keep it together. If I can get it in and if it works, then it should be okay because there's going to be no flexing on this ribbon cable once it's in. It's just whether or not it's going to work. Come on, let's do it. Ah, you're not working. Ah, oh, come on. I don't know if I've got the energy to try to solder that up again. Oh, no. Ah, oh, what? Right, leave it with me. I may look at it again just in case one wire's come loose, but I've put the glue gun all around it now. That's a shame. Right, I've resoldered it and it appears to be working. So uh, watch this. If I go to tools, there, uh, settings. I've got to be careful I haven't put any glue in it yet. Settings, display. Let's turn up the brightness. It's really low. That's better. There you go, so uh, you can see now it's starting to work. So let's, uh, I'm gonna put glue glue all over it again just to try to keep it together and then try to get this. Once I get it back together, I think it will be fine. It's just that it's to getting it back together that's gonna break the wires. I'll put some liquid, uh, liquid tape in there to stop the wires from shorting against each other. Right, they're done up. Please still work. Yes, fantastic. Right, all I have to do now is check out this file transfer thing, see if there's any way to fix that. And then I am finished. At least it looks like we have three working. So this is one of the ones that's stuck on a file transfer screen. So what I've done is I've just downloaded Garmin Web Updater, plugged it in via the USB cable and plugged it into my PC and it has recognized it. And now it's saying that the following update was found, update information. So I am going to, and that is the device there, it's a new V250. So uh, I'm gonna click next. Let's see now if we update it, whether it will start working. And this is from 2020 as well, so very recent. Right, I clicked on the next page there and it said, please make sure the batteries in your Garmin device are fully charged before installing the software update. If the batteries fail during the update process, your device may become unusable and have to be returned to Garmin for a service. So maybe that's the problem. You know, when you connect it via USB, if it cuts power to the USB to turn it on and off, maybe for those few seconds, if it's completely flat, that's where the problem arises. So uh, I'm not gonna do this right now because this battery is completely flat. I'm gonna let it charge up for a bit and then do it and see if it works. It's updating. The software on your Garmin device has been updated to version 5.1 and there may be additional updates for your device. Click next to check for more updates. Let's go. Right, these are additional updates. Okay, they're just loads of different text. Okay, I'll do I'll do everything. I wonder if that was a mistake. It says one of seventy-four. Whoops, that might take some serious time. <laughs> anyway, it's charging up at the same time as doing it, so uh, might be no harm. I'll get back to this when I'm uh, at number 74. Now that's whizzing through nice and fast now. That will take no time at all. Finished downloading and now look, I turned it on, it says loader and loading. It didn't do that before. It's still connected to my PC software loading. Interesting. Maybe we will be able to get past it this time. Yippee, look at that. 
Look at it. So obviously it's just a software issue. So all of the other ones that are not pin locked, I will be able to hopefully get them sorted as well. So I'm just going to run through the rest of them now. And this is the new V775. This is also updating as well. So hopefully this one might start working. So I've been updating them and we have six of them working, which is fantastic. This one here works, but the battery is completely flat. So when you unplug it, it dies. But what I'm going to do is three of them I can't fix because of the pin issue with them. I'm going to take the battery out of this one and I'm going to pop it into that one. And then that one should work as well because this one's staying on. It's just got a pin lock on it. Now I've taken them outside and they are connecting to the satellites, which is great. So uh, obviously I haven't done any more testing than that but it looks like they're working. So we had problems with the ports at the back and we have software issues. And on one of them, we had a problem with water damage. So all in all, quite a nice little mixture of faults. So I think I might take one of them and just go out for a spin in the car just to see what it sounds like. So here it is, I've just gone for a little spin and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's working fine. It tells me when a speed camera is coming up and stuff like that, it tells you the miles per hour off the road. So as far as I can see, it's all working good. And what a nice little mixture of faults. So there's only one thing left to do. I'm gonna treat myself to a well-deserved KFC. I've been working hard all day, so I'm gonna go for some kind of Zinger burger or something like that. So that is it for this video. A massive thanks to Mike for sending them out to me. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you all very soon. Take care, everyone. Hello, Ramona. I reach through mysterious ceilings, my only hope. I look for the things I don't know. Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't I should be the last to know We're all in this, I stand alone Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't I should be the last to know